Kia ora, good morning everyone, Mitch Wong here, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to have a look at this Fujifilm X106. This is definitely the most talked about camera release so far this year. The pre-order number was pretty crazy around the world. I talked to some of the camera shops here in New Zealand. They also told me the pre-order number they had was something that they have never seen before. So the camera has been released for a little while now and I thought it is a good time to have a proper look at this camera. So we're going to go out and shoot some photos using this camera. I will show you my shooting experience, some of the photos I shot with this camera and also I have done a bit of testing so I have some graphs and some numbers that I'm going to show you later on in this review. I'm not going to go through all the specs and details of the X106 because quite likely you have already watched some other X106 reviews or you may even have one of the previous X100 camera and the X106 in a lot of ways is very similar to the previous X100 cameras like this X100V. But just in case you know nothing at all about this X106, it has a retro style body very similar to the previous X100 cameras. Fujifilm say this is 2mm thicker and 43 gram heavier than the X100V, probably because now the camera has the in-body image stabilization system, which the previous X100 cameras doesn't have. But even when I hold the X106 and the X100V together, I don't really feel there's any difference in terms of the weight and size of these two cameras. They feel pretty much identical to me. You have many dials on the camera. There's a shutter speed dial at the top, aperture dial on the front, and the exposure compensation dial here. So you can use this dial to change the camera settings, but you can also change it to use the dial here and here if you prefer the more modern style control or you can set them all to automatic mode so you can have the camera pretty much as a pawn and shoot camera. One of the biggest selling points of the X100 series camera is its hybrid viewfinder. So you can use the viewfinder here either as an optical viewfinder or electronic viewfinder or you can even use it as an optical viewfinder but with a bit of electronic viewfinder overlay on top of it. So this is one of the very unique feature that is available on the X100 series camera, including this X106. The size of the X106 is pretty compact, probably not something I would call pocketable unless you have a very big pocket. And the build quality of this camera is very good. It feels very solid. I've compared it with my Leica Q, the original Leica Q, and I would say the build quality of this X106 is pretty much the same, even though the Leica Q is a more expensive camera. However, one thing just like the Leica Q is, this X106 is not completely weather sealed. What I mean is, if you want to have this camera as a weather sealed camera, you have to buy the optional attachment thing that you attach to the front of the lens, and then, this camera would become weather sealed. So this is something I feel a little bit disappointed about this X106 as it is a camera that a lot of people would be using it to do street photography or go out take some snapshot everywhere. So I thought it really should be a fully weather sealed camera straight out of the box. It's the Easter weekend right now, so I come to the Easter show here in Auckland and there should be a lot of good photo opportunity for me to use the X106 to take some nice photos. A lot of people love shooting with Fuji camera because of its 
film simulation that can generate some really nice looking JPEG straight out of camera. So with the X106, there are now a total of 20 different film simulations, including the new Reala Ace, which is the first time appear on the X100 camera. But with so many different film simulations, it can be a bit of a problem. If you want to find which simulation is the one that you like the most, fortunately, the camera does have a raw processor built into the camera. So if you shoot raw or raw plus JPEG, then what you can do is use the raw processor, building raw processor in the camera to generate different JPEG using different film simulation. It does take a bit of time, but you can use it to generate all the different film simulation JPEGs. So I've done that with a few photos that I shot, and I think I personally, my favorite is the Viala Ace. That seems to be my favorite. So in this video, all the photos that I'm going to show you are straight out of camera using the Viala Ace film simulation. I did put in a few of my uh, setting changes in camera, but all the photos are unedited JPEG straight out of camera. One of the major upgrades that comes with the X106 is the 40 megapixel image sensor. So this is the same sensor that you found on the X-T5 and X-H2 and there's quite a bit of resolution increase when you compare it with the X-100V which is 26 megapixel. But do you really need 40 megapixel for an X-100 camera? In some way, there are some downsides with such a high resolution sensor. For example, you need bigger memory card because the file size are bigger from the 40 megapixel output. And also, when you're shooting at a very high ISO, the image quality is really not any better than the 26 megapixel output from the X100V. But at the same time, because of the higher resolution, it does give you advantage, especially if you are using the digital zoom feature of the X106. So you can use the digital zoom to get the 50 and 70 millimeter focal length by doing a crop of the sensor output. But because of the high resolution sensor, even when you are shooting at 50 millimeter focal length, you still get 20 megapixel output. And even if you're shooting at 70 millimeter focal length, you still have a pretty usable 10 megapixel output file. So that is definitely one of the advantage of having such a high resolution sensor on this X106. But with this new higher resolution sensor, one question that I have is, does the lens on the X106, can it provide enough resolution to match the 40 megapixel output because after all this is the same lens as the one on the X100V which is only 26 megapixel. So I did some side-by-side -side tests comparing the 6 with the V. I shot the same photo with the same settings and I do see the photo from the X106. It can capture more details than the photo that I shot using the X100V. So it means the new higher resolution sensor does benefit even the lens is exactly the same. I've also done another comparison with my X-H2, which has the same 40 megapixel sensor. And I have the 23 millimeter F2WR lens mounted on the X-H2. And I also shot a comparison side-by-side -side photo. And I found the photo from the X-106 is also sharper and contain more details no matter I look at the center or the corner compared to my X-H2 setup. Now, I know that 23mm F2WR lens is not the sharpest 23mm lens, but it's still a pretty decent lens. So I guess it shows the lens on the X106. It's definitely pretty decent and it's good enough for the 40 megapixel sensor.
the X106 comes with quite a few autofocus improvement. The first one is it now has all the latest subject detection autofocus algorithm from the latest Fuji cameras. The camera can now not only detect human eyes, but also has a range of subjects that it can detect, including animals, birds, motorcycle, cars, I think train, and probably something else I forgot. But I do wonder how useful is it to have subject detection with a 35 mm focal length lens because you're probably not going to do any bird tracking or plane tracking using this lens. But anyway, I'm not going to complain because it's always good to have different subject detection even though you may not really use it. And for human eye detection, it does seem to work quite well. Another improvement I noticed is the autofocus speed and also the noise that generated by the camera is quite a bit better compared to the previous X100 camera. I did some side-by-side -side comparison with the X100 V and I noticed autofocus is definitely faster and more quiet as well. I still won't say it is as good as some of the latest mirrors camera in the market, but for the type of photo that you usually will shoot with the X100 camera, I think the autofocus performance is good enough. Another thing I really like about the X106 is its leaf shutter is very very quiet when i take photo outdoor like here i pretty much cannot hear any shutter sound at all even when i use it indoor the shutter sound i can barely hear it so that is very good if i want to do some street photography because the camera is a lot more quiet compared to most mirrorless cameras in the market The X106 is the first X100 camera that has a built-in IBIS or the in-body image stabilization system. The official figure from Fujifilm say the IBIS is six stops effective. When shooting photo in real world, I can quite easily get sharp photo even at one second shutter speed just handheld, so that is pretty good. And I did some tests as usual. I shot a couple hundred photos at different shutter speed with and without the IBIS enabled and I check all the photos and here is the result that I got. So it is about four stop effective which doesn't really match the six stop figure claimed by Fujifilm but if you have watched any of my other reviews before you will know that my result pretty much can never match the official figure. But full stop effective is still pretty good and in my opinion this is the biggest upgrade that comes with the X106. I say that because I think most people that are using the X106 will be taking photos without bringing a tripod. If you want to take some snapshot photo under low light or if you want to do some long exposure shot then the IBIS make it a lot more useful. And that also means you can handheld the photo shoot at a much slower shutter speed compared to without IBIS and that can also help improve the image quality as well. Another feature I really like about the X106 is it has the built-in 4-stop ND filter. So this is not a brand new feature because it was available in the previous X100 camera as well. But this time because the camera also has IBIS Combining IBIS with the built-in ND filter, it makes the built-in ND filter even more useful because it allows you to take some slow shutter speed handheld photo during the day when you enable both the ND filter 
and the IBIS. So this is something that you couldn't do with the previous 600 camera and to be honest, most other cameras in the market also don't allow you to do that because there are not that many cameras in the market that has a built-in ND filter. Okay, so far, I think in this review, I have talked about many things that I really like about this X106, but this camera is not a perfect camera, and there are definitely a few things that I think Fujifilm can improve maybe on their next model. The first thing is the tripod mount. So if you look at the bottom of the camera, the tripod mount is not aligned with the center of the lens. It's a little bit towards the battery door. So one practical issue that I found is when I put the camera on the tripod, I cannot open the battery door once I put it on the tripod, no matter I just directly mount it on the tripod or using a quick release plate because the quick release plate would be blocking the battery door. That means I cannot change the battery or the SD card because they are both accessed through this battery door. Another thing is the SD card slot is still a UHS-1, not the high-speed UHS-2 type. I know that not many people shooting with the X100 camera will be shooting in burst mode, but for a camera at this price point, I really hope that it has the faster UHS-2 type card slot instead. I did some comparison with my XH2 and I found that when I'm shooting in burst mode, I can shoot a lot more photos with the XH2 before the buffer filled up. And also I found the XH2 can clear the buffer a lot faster than the X106, even though they both have the 40 megapixel sensor. I noticed recently a lot of X100 users like to use black mist filter when taking photo with the X100 to create that dreamy look. So I thought why not give it a try as well. The X100 takes 49mm fun filter. I don't have the exact size black mist filter but I do have a step up ring for that. Unfortunately to use fun filter on the X100 you do need to get that filter adapter which I don't have. So for me, I just manually hold and place the filter in front of the camera to take some photos. So here are the photos I shot using the X106 with the black mist filter. As a compact camera, the Fujifilm X106 is getting quite close to what a perfect camera could be. I say quite close to perfect because I feel the autofocus performance could still be slightly better and I still think it should be a fully weather sealed camera straight out of the box without having to use any additional attachment. But apart from that, this 6th generation X100 is really an excellent camera. The image quality is really good. The JPEG straight out of camera is absolutely beautiful. The hybrid viewfinder is fun and still very unique. Even though I did find myself shooting with the LCD screen most of the time. But what I really like about the X106 is not so much about its image quality or the film simulation. What I found really great is the shooting experience. The solid build quality, the shutter speed down, the aperture ring, and the subtle shutter noise when you press the shutter button all together just make it a really enjoyable camera to shoot with so that makes the x106 different from pretty much any other camera in the market if you're looking for a high quality compact everyday camera that you can carry around with you all the time but also super fun to use this fujifilm x106 is really a fantastic choice.